Bruce, we're going to head over to the analyst desk. Thank you, gentlemen. They hit it there. The sentiment that a lot of people have, when is SKT going to lose a game this World's uh, Championship? If ever, we'll find out, because they didn't lose that one. Uh, and they came out in somewhat more dominating fashion this time around. Monty said it looked cleaner, felt a little bit cleaner across the board. Again, although the CS differential wasn't there in the mid lane, Faker just dominating uh, score line and on that rise to... Yeah, in, in the whole tournament, SKT's drafts have been great. And some other teams have drafts that we can question, like, you know what, I'm not really feeling the champions. I'm not understanding why that is. But for SKT, their drafts are so good because the champions are all extremely synergistic within each other. So in this composition where they have the Renekton, Gragas, Rice, Kalista, Tam Kench, all of these champions are very good at skirmishing within the same range. So all their dashes, all their spells are usually within that 500 to 600 range, which really fits into the skirmish style composition that they've been trying to run in this entire series. And that's what really makes a great comp when the team effort and the team teamwork that you do fits the champions, and that's why they're playing so well. You see them move as a unit. The champions allow them play, to play as a unit, and it's just great. It's exciting to watch. That's the style that SKT really excels at, that skirmish type. And not only are they accomplishing that here with these picks and bans, but they're also countering a lot of the strategies from their enemies here. They have Elise, Twisted Fate, and Thresh on the other team. Three single-target pick champions, and then Tom Kench comes out for SKT. I absolutely love this champion here for Wolf. Wolf was a guy that at MSI, everybody's afterwards, they're kind of watching him. He was under the microscope because of his performance, and he's gotten better and better over time, and I love adding Tom Kench to his repertoire here because that makes it so that he has this champion that not only is, like, he's usually playing Alistar and Braum, he's usually on some type of engage, and now he's gone full disengage, full run around the map, help his team out, stop them from getting picked, and that even just increases their skirmish power even more when you can't kill the guy. This is actually what I love about the team. You can see him on the screen there. They're listening to their coach. They are so calm in their demeanor, and they're honestly like a boulder. Like, game one, you, like, get it rolling, and then they, as they pick up speed, they just look completely unstoppable, and they start crushing people, literally. <laughs> the one weakness of SKT going into MSI was that you could rush them. You could make them fight before they wanted to fight. You could get little snowball-y leads. AHQ was doing it. Fnatic did it one game. EDG actually won the series pretty much by rushing SKT. They are the best early game team fighting team I have ever seen. They win every single 2v2, 3v3, 5v5. Hell, they even win from deficits a lot of the time because of the way they set up every fight. Their vision control just completely sets everything up. They know when a fight is gonna happen before you know you're gonna pick a fight with them. Yeah. You know what else they win? 2v4 tower damage <laughs> from Hotland. Right? Oh my God. <laughs> that, I mean, that outplay there and, and the, the presence of mind to make the play that Marin made in the bot lane. The thing I love about this though is Marin, he's setting himself up for success before this even happens. He's in the, the mindset that they could dive me here in this lane swap because of the way things are positioning on the map. I'm gonna shove the wave out so it pushes back towards me and that he's ready. He has a level advantage, he's level four. People coming in on him right now, level threes, level twos, he's got this advantage, he has all his spells, he's ready to go, but this is so telegraphed. The TP came through, they're a little late because the wave got bounced off of this turret slightly, and then he just goes full in, and they have to go by Faker, who has the TP in the mid lane, and he catches Ziv under the turret. There was a lantern there available for Ziv to click it and get there, but oh man, the 2v4 turret dive sets him up for success there, and when you give that early kill over to Arise, that mid lane is just, it's hell on. That's my problem right with AHQ's game, that they're going into these picking champions that have counters, so they know that SKT is going to counter your Darius. You're not going to get this matchup without a counter pick into it. And then they go for the lane swap. Like, you're not going to beat this team in the macro level. You're getting it outplayed. You got outplayed game one. You got outplayed game two. Stop going for, these, for this game. And if you're going to rush, you need to have a more aggressive approach and unpredictability. Because in a 2v2 lane, the jungler has a lot of room for actually just ganking anywhere. But in a lane swap, it's very obvious where the junglers will go, where the top laners will go, where the supports, the supports not so much, but if HQ really has, wants to have a chance at at least showing something, you need to play to that chaotic style thing. Yeah, that's exactly what I think <laughs> they've actually <laughs> yeah. lost a little bit. I don't know if it's because we've seen more of AHQ and that there's a big microscope on the LMS region as a whole to perform, but 
when we used to see this team, they would like skirmish you to death. They would do these really unpredictable fights. This time around, where, what really sold it to me wasn't the turret dive, it was actually when they face checked the brush with Elise before the TF ult was ready. AHQ at MSI, that would have been so synchronized and on point and they would have torn you apart from that uh, stage. Instead, Westor falls even further behind in lane. He's already got a lot of kill pressure against him because Ryze has wave clear engaged, like everything in a mid laner at the moment. And it's just like kind of starting to fall apart. Well, SKT are just one game away from locking in their spot in the semifinals. We'll see if AHQ can keep the series alive in game three. Don't go anywhere. We're loading up onto the rift for game two of this best of five. Bang gets caught by a cocoon and the flay holds Marin in place. Art is going low. Marin will not be able to get the kill. We'll find Bang. Devours available and Wolf eats him. Saving Bang. No damage. Bits him back out and there's no damage. But hashtag not worth. Faker gets apprehended backwards. Only to murder Ziv. Take down Westall. SKT are one game away from a semi-final placement.